Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Your Excellency, Ms. Uh, Raha uh, Fatima, Ambassador of uh, People's Republic of Bangladesh in Japan, uh, 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 Dr. Uh, Nobuko Kayashima, Director, JICA Research Institute, uh, Mr. Shohei Hara, Director General, South Asian Department, JICA, and uh, Mr. Uh, Mount Moham Pakesh, uh, Country Director, ADB, uh, Bangladesh Resident Mission, uh, distinguished guest, Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Asalaamu Alaikum, Namaskar, Konnichiwa, good afternoon. Thank you, thank you very much for uh, having me here today and uh, uh, let me uh, share with you the uh, main punchline of this uh, book uh, titled Economic and Social Development in Bangladesh, Miracle of Challenges. Uh, actually, I've just returned back uh, from uh, Manila to Tokyo uh, last night. Uh, finding uh, this is uh, really challenging uh, weather, uh, much more challenging than the weather in uh, the Philippines. But anyway, uh, I'm glad uh, to uh, have this opportunity. Uh, actually, I spent uh, around two years in Dhaka, uh, 2011 up until 2013, as a visiting scholar to uh, BRAC, uh, Research and uh, Evaluation Division, as well as uh, Bangladesh Institute of Development Studies. And uh, for my uh, stay at the uh, uh, BRAC uh, Research and Development Department, um, uh, late Dr. Mahabub Hussain uh, uh, really uh, played a key role. And also, he played a key role to make this book, in fact. And uh, JICA, uh, JICA Research Institute uh, 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 had uh, three rounds of uh, Bangladesh uh, studies. Uh, and I led uh, COLET, with, uh, together with the JICA Research Institute uh, fellows, uh, COLET, uh, three rounds of uh, studies. And actually, first round, uh, together with uh, Dr. Afsain and uh, another uh, fellow, uh, uh, Dr. Minak Sen uh, of BIDS, uh, and myself, three of us, uh, made a background paper and background chapter for World Bank uh, 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 Development Report, WDR 2013 jobs. And uh, in that uh, report, Bangladesh was treated as a, a model uh, or a role model for uh, other uh, African countries or other uh, countries. Uh, as uh, 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 Dr. Kashima uh, briefly mentioned, uh, uh, this book is an outcome of a, a, a joint production uh, between uh, a, a joint production of many scholars from uh, both sides, Bangladesh and Japan. So I'm really glad I can uh, uh, talk about this book. Uh, so let me uh, move on. Uh, the purpose of this book, there are three uh, purposes initially. Uh, number one is to discuss Bangladesh economic and social development, which has been described as a miracle, uh, uh, meaning that remarkable development uh, progress and uh, several unfavorable uh, condition, including uh, disasters and uh, rapid urbanization, etc., etc. Uh, that's the first uh, purpose. And second purpose is to identify and discuss uh, 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 yet uh, remaining challenges. And then third purpose is to draw lessons and uh, discuss its duplicability to other emerging economies. This book argues Bangladesh's remarkable success uh, has been facilitated by basically several uh, uh, structural transformations uh, uh, listed here, industrialization, success, fueled by infrastructure, and also a rural sector, of course, microfinance, <coughs> microcredit uh, programs play a key role together with uh, uh, productivity improvements in agriculture. Uh, uh, partly through introduction of green evolution, uh, modern varieties. And uh, uh, through this process, we see also uh, very substantial empowerment of women. Uh, yet, uh, we also identify uh, several challenges, uh, urbanization, disasters, and also some uh, economic uh, instability and uh, some challenging uh, political uh, issues as well as political and uh, governance issues, as well as uh, rising inequalities. So this is a, a, a big picture of our purposes. Uh, uh, literally, there are many uh, studies addressing uh, each different components I listed uh, uh, in previous slides. Uh, but originality of our research uh, can be summarized by this conceptual uh, framework. 
uh, which describes countries over all development uh, process. And um, um, so, you know, many studies focusing on, for example, role of microfinance, NGOs, development of uh, ready-made uh, garment sector, RMG sector as a playing role, uh, absorbing a female labor, and as a result, uh, people started investing uh, 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 female education, so all the social indicators became uh, uh, much more favorable uh, to uh, female rather than uh, as opposed vis a vis a uh, uh, male, etc., etc. Um, so there are these studies uh, uh, discussing each issue separately. Uh, however, uh, uh, here we aim to provide in this book a comprehensive, integrated picture of Bangladesh development. Uh, that is often termed a miracle. Uh, as we can see from figure, uh, we started from uh, 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 three or four. <coughs> Maybe this is too unclear. Yeah? So left end, we can see in rural sector, we can see you know microfinance, microcredit institutional play a very important role. Not only microcredit institution but also other NGOs working in uh, different sectors, education, health, etc., etc., and also green revolution uh, leading to continuous productivity improvements. These are the uh, 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 changes uh, happening in rural area. Uh, on the other hand, non-farm sectors, as uh, repeatedly I mentioned, ready-made garment industry uh, became the leading industry of Bangladesh economy. And, uh, 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 Actually, green revolution, uh, productivity improvements, and microfinance, microcredit uh, 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 programs, uh, making the farmers uh, uh, well off and the higher income, and also uh, 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 relax uh, binding credit constraints. So now people can get access to credit programs. As a result, uh, people in rural areas started in investing in human capital, especially uh, daughters' education. And after getting education, uh, uh, young people started moving out of farming uh, sector and then uh, working for non-farm employment. So this uh, uh, you know, development of rural sector, uh, rural uh, villages, and also uh, emergence of uh, non-farm uh, sectors, notably ready-made garment industries, working uh, hand in hand and uh, uh, mutually reinforcing development. And as a result, uh, uh, farm income as well as no farm income substantially increased, as uh, 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 Ambassador uh, 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 mentioned. Uh, in last uh, one decade, 6% growth, and lately more than 7%. And latest uh, figure, our growth focus, uh, set Bangladesh growth rate this year to be 7.7%. 7, .7%. Uh, seven percent is uh, remarkably uh, uh, fast. Uh, if a country continues seven percent growth ten years, that country's size will double. So this is like uh, really amazingly fast uh, growth. And as a result, we can see overall welfare improvement in Bangladesh. So this is a book uh, uh, trying to describe this whole process uh, using uh, micro data, different type of data, but micro so-called panel data. Uh, uh, collected by uh, late uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Mahmoud Fusahin. Uh, but at the same time, we identify uh, remaining risks and challenges for sustainable uh, development of Bangladesh. So this is the uh, uh, big picture we postulated. And uh, uh, next step, I'm going to explain uh, piece by piece of uh, uh, each component. So this book is composed of uh, uh, four sections. Uh, first section, talking about economic transformation. Secondly, social transformation. And then uh, third, uh, overall welfare improvements. Then uh, we're going to uh, discuss uh, remaining risks and uh, challenges. So actually, economic transformation, if we keep using the uh, 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 figure uh, I uh, showed you uh, uh, before, uh, upper upper se segments, emergence of uh, uh, ready-made government industry, and that development fueled by infrastructure investment, public infrastructure investment, uh, uh, leading to uh, 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 expansion of non-farm employment, and resulting in uh, better non-farm income. So this process uh, is described in uh, first section uh, 
uh, titled Economic Transformation. And second section titled Social Transformation describes what's the uh, underlying uh, supporting uh, mechanism behind this. Uh, as I mentioned, green liberation or productivity improvements, agriculture, and also uh, emergence of uh, or penetration of uh, microfinance institutions and other NGOs, villages, uh, making people start investing in human capital and then moving out to uh, uh, non farm sector. So, this uh, process of social transformation is described in uh, section two. And the section three discuss overall welfare improvements as a result of uh, 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 mutually enforcing agriculture or rural and uh, non agriculture or industrial sector. And then, uh, 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 final uh, section four, uh, we discuss uh, remaining challenges. So, this is the menu of this. So let me uh, start uh, discussing about the first economic transformation. Uh, so this is the uh, long-term uh, per capita GDP growth in uh, selected countries. Bangladesh figure is described in big uh, red uh, line. And uh, we can see uh, uh, Bangladesh has achieved successful uh, continuous uh, growth of per capita GDP or uh, successful development transformation which has been occurring in even an accelerated speed. Uh, so chapter four, one uh, reaffirmed that Bangladesh uh, success uh, 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 is driven by mainly a three country specific mechanisms I already uh, mentioned. Number one is the penetration of MFIs and NGOs in rural communities. Number two is a spectacular development of ready-made government industry and other industries. And finally, uh, significant improved investment in infrastructure, which fuel this uh, structure of economic transformation, uh, a, a successful uh, transformation uh, process. So this is chapter one. And uh, we also put the latest uh, poverty figure. In terms of poverty reduction over decades, uh, Bangladesh also uh, achieved a remarkable uh, performance. Uh, I remember when I was an uh, undergraduate student in the late 1980s, uh, Bangladesh was uh, treated as one of the uh, notable examples of uh, uh, forest economy. But uh, I don't think we can claim that uh, anymore. Uh, now Bangladesh it is uh, now treated as a successful miracle plus uh, case, as well as, uh, as I mentioned, uh, Bangladesh gross performance should be treated as a role model for uh, late comers. So this is a first chapter. And chapter two, uh, now uh, look into uh, different industries. And uh, chapter two actually uh, look into two uh, recent um, uh, successful industries, uh, uh, development of uh, ready-made carbon industry and pharmaceutical uh, industry. Uh, while the government, government sector and the pharmaceutical industry uh, uh, basically differ in so many respects. Uh, but uh, this chapter basically discuss uh, uh, emergence of these two industries. Uh, there is much more commonality than uh, we would think. And uh, uh, two industries share essentially the same gross mechanisms. Basically, both uh, industries began their rapid development with massive uh, technological transfers uh, in a broader sense, even though they differ in the motivations of such technological transfers. The massive transfers in technology made these pre previously unfavorable or unprofitable industries highly uh, profitable, which motivated uh, affluent uh, business persons and financial institutions to invest in them, and highly educated youth to be attracted to the idea of being uh, their future leaders and leading sectors. These highly educated managers or entrepreneurs in turn uh, constructed system in their firms to constantly upgrade management practices, marketing, and production technology by learning from abroad, which has kept their firms and industries competitive in world markets. So this chapter two, using a, a unique uh, microdata, describes this uh, common process of two industries. And uh, of course, uh, this emergence of non-farm sector 
uh, has been fueled by uh, 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 active uh, uh, investment in uh, infrastructure, physical infrastructure. Uh, chapter four, uh, we discuss how uh, community and household level infrastructure interventions data showed us uh, 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 infrastructure development in roles, electricity, financial institutions uh, enhances uh, household welfare over the long run. In particular, uh, 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 income and expenditure substantially improved uh, uh, after uh, 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 this uh, basic infrastructure has been made. So data clearly shows this process. And uh, the chapter particularly shows that grid connectivity and road investment increase income and expenditures, and therefore uh, substantially lower uh, poverty. More importantly, the analysis indicates infrastructure investment rise uh, non-firm income more than firm income and enabling uh, structural transformation from agriculture based to non-agriculture based in sustainable long-term manner. The analysis also indicates the importance of uh, financial uh, infrastructure in rural areas, as I mentioned, penetration of uh, microfinance, microcredit uh, institutions. Household income goes up by 10% and uh, consumption expenditure uh, by almost 5% as a result of the increase of one microfinance institution branch in a village. So this uh, process of uh, structural transformation fueled by uh, uh, infrastructure, which is described in chapter uh, uh, four. And uh, chapter three, so here uh, 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 there is a uh, typo. This is a chapter three. Uh, uh, further investigates uh, economic transformation process. Actually, I, as I described, uh, financial uh, institutions, uh, uh, infrastructure, uh, play a very important role to uh, facilitate uh, income increase. Um, indeed, number of microcredit programs in Bangladesh has increased dramatically, as can be seen from the left figure here. So left figure shows the uh, number of MFIs in the last uh, few decades in Bangladesh. We see a sharp increase in total number. And uh, as a result, substantial economic transformation occurred in rural communities. Uh, Microcredit programs uh, relax credit constraint. So farmers previously couldn't get money to send uh, kids to school, but now uh, uh, these binding constraints are relaxed. So facilitating the various investment, notably human capital investment. It also increased the uh, lease land arrangements, uh, making better land access for landless people, Data shows uh, over the long run, uh, landless people uh, never uh, walk, I mean, uh, very few proportion of uh, uh, landless people walked as a leasehold land uh, farmer, but now uh, 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 half or more than half of the landless people can get land access as a uh, lease land holders. And uh, uh, actually, as a result, landless uh, people benefit from institutional credit also. And uh, uh, we have a data uh, in this chapter. And uh, finally, and uh, more importantly, so-called uh, feminization of agriculture has been happening, uh, uh, promoting a female labor force participation in agriculture uh, because of the uh, microcredit access uh, and also another but the reason behind this is uh, a migration of uh, people from rural to urban area. But anyway, uh, this uh, feminization of agriculture seems to uh, empower women continuously. This right figure, however, shows uh, 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 a density of MFIs. Actually, many microfinance uh, institutions and programs went into the village. So you can imagine so many uh, micro uh, uh, finance, micro credit uh, programs in single village or single area. So this is a opposite level uh, uh, density or number of uh, microfinance programs. The darker the color, more microfinance institutions within the uh, same uh, opposite. So we can see even a very remote area there are so many micro credit, micro uh, finance uh, programs available. And uh, competition, as a result, competition between microfinance institutions has intensified substantially. So actually, this chapter three, not chapter four, chapter three, um, 
uh, using uh, very unique data from uh, uh, PKSF, what's, uh, which is a wholesale of micro uh, credits, uh, using uh, uh, very unique data from PKSF, uh, uh, discuss what is the right competition policy of uh, microfinance institutions. And um, actually, PKSF has been providing a subsidy to uh, uh, retail uh, each microfinance, registered microfinance uh, programs or institutions. And uh, actually, this chapter showed the subsidies uh, of PKSF uh, indeed uh, uh, facilitated rapid growth of microfinance sector, generated uh, overall positive uh, welfare impacts. Uh, however, magnitude is uh, rather moderate. So that's uh, uh, this chapter. And uh, in addition to domestic economic transformation, uh, uh, labor migration, particularly international migration, plays a key role in economic development in Bangladesh. Chapter 5 uh, 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 discussed this overall role of uh, international migration and remittance for economic development in Bangladesh. And Mr. Uh, Dr. Adil Amrata, also, is here in uh, uh, this, uh, today's uh, event. So maybe later you can ask him if you're interested in uh, uh, migration and remittance issues. Uh, uh, since uh, remittances from uh, migrant workers have positive impact on poverty reduction and in Bangladesh, these positive impacts could become long-term and broader. Migrants and their households could use remittance for more productive purposes, uh, such as education, housing, and other purposes. In order to facilitate, so after documenting this, uh, this uh, pattern, uh, this chapter uh, also discussed several policy implications. Government play a role to facilitate uh, overall uh, you know, positive benefit of migration and uh, remittances. So this is the end of the first section, uh, economic transformation. Now let's move on to uh, uh, social dimension of uh, transformation, uh, uh, social transformation. Uh, this uh, second section, social transformation, places a particular focus on this uh, social dimension of structural transformation. In chapter six, uh, 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 first we examine role of non-farm sector growth in facilitating several female empowerment indicators such as women schooling, labor force participation, and delayed marriages, and overall uh, strong additional role of women. Uh, as we can, uh, so this figure summarizes a process of how a social transformation uh, uh, became uh, uh, possible through uh, 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 you know, female empowerment. Uh, so actually, in addition to this uh, uh, chapter, uh, uh, using a data showing that in addition to some government uh, uh, flagship uh, programs, such as a female stipend program, as well as a public investment in infrastructure, uh, uh, village, uh, as well as uh, microfinance uh, going to the village, uh, village level exposure to non-farm uh, uh, sector development uh, seems to induce uh, female schooling, because now uh, uh, people became aware if you send your uh, daughter to school, then their income can substantially improve. So seeing this uh, 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 exposure to non-farm employment, uh, parents started sending uh, uh, a daughter to school. So female school enrollment improved, and as many of you may be aware, uh, female uh, elementary school enrollment rate and the secondary school enrollment rate is now much higher than uh, boys' uh, elementary and secondary enrollment rate. So this sending uh, uh, female women to school uh, making uh, accumulation of human capital women and uh, as a result, uh, female uh, labor force participation went up. Uh, fertility rate uh, became lower because of people, women started marrying late. So marriage age became uh, 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 older, and as a result, overall this young uh, power uh, of women uh, strengthened. So this is a, a women's empowerment process uh, through a social uh, transformation. So microdata, uh, initially broken by Dr. Uh, Dr. Mahmoud Hussain, using this very unique uh, microdata, we document this process in chapter six. Uh, in social transformation, not to mention, Bangladesh, as I mentioned, made notable achievement in overall education uh, progress, especially in uh, narrowing uh, gender gap in education. Uh, 
So chapter seven, uh, again, using the data document this uh, uh, process. And uh, Bangladesh has been quite successful in achieving uh, Millennium Development Goal, uh, goal number two for universal primary education. Uh, however, um, uh, this country, uh, Bangladesh, has still have a, a, a long way to uh, improve overall education quality and student performance that will be indispensable for gaining international competitiveness. So uh, this uh, chapter also documents uh, there are uh, remaining challenges in uh, human capital investment and education. Um, here are four different challenges are highlighted. Number one, low quality of teaching and learning still binding constraint. Number two, dropouts as a result of seasonality and academic current uh, mismatches is uh, still uh, a problem. Number three, uh, especially noticeable female dropout rate is still uh, 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 substantial, in, especially in rural area related to early age marriage. And finally, insufficient access to education for rural and poor students at the tertiary level or college and university level, partially due to the high cost of uh, preparation. As you frequently visit Bangladesh, in Dhaka, you can see lots of uh, advertisement and the school signs of the coaching center. So unless you go to coaching center, you cannot get into uh, top universities such as uh, Dhaka University. So we also discuss, um, and uh, here, uh, I don't have time to explain, but here we collected the uh, data on the main uh, major university, how competitive to get into these uh, schools and also how costly uh, to get into school. Although once you get into Dhaka University, you are tuition free, but uh, in order to get into Dhaka University, you have to spend a lot of money uh, going to coaching center, for example. So, so these um, uh, issues are uh, closely discussed in this chapter uh, seven. Uh, chapter eight highlights uh, proliferation of non-government organization NGOs in Bangladesh and its potential role in creating jobs for youth population. This is quite unique data collected by JICA Research Institute Using that unique data, we describe uh, NGO sector uh, employment uh, issues in NGO sector and uh, uh, So, so specifically, findings of survey reveal uh, job opportunities in NGO sector are regarded as less, indeed less attractive uh, than those in public or private sector, mainly due to uh, lower wages. Uh, however, uh, once uh, NGOs uh, uh, started supporting education and upgrading qualification support for health insurance, willingness to join, young people joining uh, uh, to NGO sector substantially increased. So this is quite a unique sector because NGO has been playing a very important role in Bangladesh. How to continue this success uh, is really depend on how uh, attractive uh, this sector is for young people. So, after describing the uh, economic transformation process in section one and the social transformation process in section two, section three, uh, we describe overall welfare improvements. Chapter nine and chapter 10, uh, we examine welfare consequences of uh, microcredit programs in Bangladesh. Uh, chapter nine, uh, authors uh, using uh, uh, um, a very unique long-term other data, tracking the same people over almost 20 years to see what's the impact of a microcredit program over 20 years. So this is the uh, uh, almost the first study tracking the uh, uh, impact of a microcredit uh, program over such a long uh, time. And uh, 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 this chapter nine uh, shows the welfare, uh, household welfare outcome improved dramatically as a result of microcredit borrowing. Uh, actually, there is uh, some debate uh, about the effectiveness of a microcredit program in reducing poverty, but uh, this 20 years long term impact clearly shows microcredit program uh, generated a substantial impact. And um, uh, 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 the, as a result, both authors recommend that expansion of microcredit finance activity in non farm sectors as, as well as manufacturing activities are quite critical to continue. Uh, uh, growth trajectory of uh, Bangladesh. And uh, chapter 10 uh, also uh, picked up uh, uh, quite uh, important issues, so-called uh, over, uh, uh, overlapping uh, borrowing issues. Uh, once many microcredit uh, program became uh, 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 
became available in the village, people started borrowing multiple sources, not only one MFI, but also another MFI. So this is one concern uh, 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 seriously debated in Bangladesh. And actually, chapter 10, using, uh, again, unique data from <coughs> Bangladesh and India to compare what's the evidence behind multiple borrowing. Uh, in short, uh, Bangladesh, because of a library investment, uh, people needed to borrow not only one source, but also another source. So that's a, 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 a data analysis uh, finding. But in India, in contrast, uh, people engage in uh, multiple borrowing because of a, a sort of a not necessarily good purpose in order to so borrowing one source in order to make repayment, you borrow from another source and make repayment. This is so-called Ponzi game type of uh, uh, mechanism seems to be uh, uh, found in India. And uh, actually, we discussed what's the, uh, why uh, Bangladesh multiple borrowing is better and uh, India not necessarily good. Uh, Bangladesh, most of the MFIs, except Grameen Bank, uh, basically NGO, non-profit seeking. But uh, India, uh, many MFIs are operating as a private profit seeking institution. So, so probably, uh, difference in the corporate governance structure incentive making up these differences. So we can learn further why Bangladesh uh, uh, microfinance, microcredit institutions have been so uh, successful. And then uh, finally, in this uh, section three, we compare ultimate welfare indicator, which is uh, happiness or uh, self selective uh, well being measures. And uh, uh, chapter 11, we uh, investigate urban sector was the uh, determinant of uh, subjective well-being or happiness and uh, clearly uh, shown that the environmental quality as well as road safety uh, and uh, water quality, these issues seems to directly uh, connected to happiness of urban sector in Bangladesh. And uh, chapter 12, uh, looking at the uh, rural area, again, subjective well-being or happiness and finding that income play a very important role in rural area, uh, uh, enhancing happiness. And also, not only overall happiness, we uh, uh, investigated uh, domain-specific happiness, happiness in job, happiness in economy and uh, economic dimension, happiness in uh, housing, happiness in leisure, social happiness, and marriages. All happiness seems to be uh, driven by uh, better income. So. Actually, uh, economic transformation, we confine our attention to income improvements, and that seems to enhance overall happiness in uh, Bangladesh. Uh, final uh, section, uh, we uh, listed a number of challenges, and uh, actually there are uh, 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 four challenges listed here. Uh, number one is the sustainable sustainability of the miracle, as Ambassador uh, Ms. Patina uh, already mentioned. So how to sustain uh, Miracle under the expanding inequality in employment, income, and education opportunities, as well as uh, binding energy and infrastructure constraints. Uh, second uh, 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 challenge listed here is urbanization risks, such as traffic accident, uh, which is uh, actually discussed in chapter 10, and uh, air and water pollution. And finally, uh, the, the third one is uh, a potential uh, uh, threat of disasters, uh, natural disasters, climate change related uh, 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 risks, and secondary technological disasters, power shortages, including uh, 2013 uh, Sabah uh, Rana Plaza building crops. And uh, economic crisis due to export slump may uh, generate a negative uh, impact on our leading uh, exporting sector. And now uh, we are entering the era of global um, uh, trade tension escalation. And um, uh, finally, uh, uh, issues around the governance, uh, somewhat challenges in uh, governance and uh, political civilities uh, uh, we need to address. And uh, as Dr. Kayashima has said, uh, uh, we also encounter very such uh, terrorist attack incident in Dhaka two years ago. Uh, so these are the challenges, but um, I'd like to emphasize, in closing, I'd like to emphasize uh, that there are uh, critical roles government can play. Uh, first, government needs to act as a catalyst for development in a much more active manner 
than before in order to sustain uh, uh, Bangladesh and Morocco. And also, uh, in order to pursue that, uh, uh, for facilitate, uh, uh, for facilitating a structure transformation, government needs to seriously implement, carefully design some type of industrial policy that nurture entrepreneurship and building a variable experience gaining miraculous development government industry. So now government industry diversification is needed, pharmaceutical industry and also building industry, etc., etc. So government can uh, play a proactive role in this uh, uh, diversified uh, industrialization process. And finally, government should continue to invest in infrastructure to support and fuel this diversification and further structural transformation in order to sustain uh, miraculous uh, uh, growth and development of uh, Bangladesh. Uh, with that, I'd like to stop here, and thank you very much for listening.